What's up everyone, today I want to talk about a quite controversial topic, creative mastering chains. Usually the different stages of a music production start with the most creative stuff and are then believed to end with the most technical stuff. So like composition and sound design is at the beginning, at the core of the music, no one can tell you to use no reverb on the bass line in that stage or something like that. This is all about breaking the rules and at the end of the process there is stuff like mixing and especially mastering string where you just try to tweak the last bits of something out of the music and in these stages there are pretty much rules that you have to apply like when there is not enough high end then you boost the high end and it's easy as that but in this video I try to make the point that you can actually make creative mastering chains as well and in order to show you what I mean I will now dry wet my mastering chain on this beat. <laughs> Now what does this mastering chain do? Let's talk about that first. First of all, there is an instance of Nell, which is the vibrato plugin that I made and it plays at a fourth note rate in LFO, no other modulator on the sync wave table so that there is always a moment where the modulation jumps a little bit higher. And yeah, the depth is not too crazy because otherwise you would hear it vibrate in pitch a lot. It should just shake things up slightly. And then there is this layer and one of these is the dry signal and the other one is a chain that starts with a very extreme Saturn setting that uses broken tube on all of the bands. Also wider and soothe too to flatten out the nasty resonances that are often introduced by the broken tube algorithm in Saturn. And I'm mixing that with a dry signal. Now this is what I would consider the most creative part of this chain. I mean applying a vibrato to a master chain we already know that from lo-fi hip-hop but this is pretty extreme. And then I have an instance of Saturn after this layer to glue the layers together again. This one is more subtle. It uses warm tube, warm tube, warm tube and warm tube and not on maxed out values as well. Well, they are pretty high, but that's just how I like it. It is a creative mastering chain after all, not a perfect one. I could still imagine improving it here and there, maybe a little bit of multiband compression to make the bass a little bit less heavy. But you know, you get the idea. This sounds pretty much better than the dry signal and it works for the whole project, even for this bridge here. Yeah, uh, and that's why the chain definitely needs to be there. Usually when things like these are asked in a Facebook group or something, when this topic comes up, like what, how should you master? Should you use heavy distortion on the master or reverb or something, something crazy, you know? People say, no, you shouldn't do that. You should probably, when you come into a situation like this, you should go back to the mixing stage and find out which of the elements exactly want to be treated like that and treat them individually. But this doesn't always work. I mean, maybe it works for reverbs, but for distortion, I would argue it doesn't work like that because when you distort multiple things together, you 
you also glue them into each other because of the intermodulation artifacts. So it will always have a different flavor to distort everything altogether than to just distort individual channels or buses. So there is definitely a potential for creative mastering chains to enable you to do things that you otherwise couldn't do at all. And the question is rather, do you want these things to happen or are they just yuck? I would argue that they sometimes are pretty cool, like in this case. And this brings up multiple questions. One of them, for example, would be, are there alternative creative mastering chains that you could think that would work with the same base project? And another question would be, what if you decide for a creative mastering chain at the beginning of a project already and, you know, make all of your decisions based on this chain to directly work into this chain? This is an approach that was considered a long time ago when FL Studio was developed, a door that by default puts a pretty heavy limiter on the master bus, which influenced a lot of music because all of these newbies who just downloaded their first FL Studio crack in their life do not notice this limiter and just start putting things into the drum machine. And at the end, they have a lot of beats with this limiter without even knowing it. So they have been working like that all the time already. And in some way, analog consoles also work the same way because if you think of it, this analog warmth, as people like to call it, is mostly just wave shaping or saturating the individual faders or the summing of those and that's also the same as if you started every project with a bunch of saturators on the master and each bus already we can already rule this out this is definitely something that can be done the only difference is that saturation is pretty subtle and massively distorting the master is not very subtle so this is still open for discussion <laughs> Now let's talk about the other question again, which is, can you come up with an alternative mastering chain that is creative? and that still works with the same project. Would that make sense? So that's what I'm going to try now. I have no idea in which direction it will go yet, but let's just see. Okay, now I have an idea. Last time I made a creative mastering chain, I made one that was very noisy. This time I wanna make one that is very fine. So I will start things off by just loading a layer where one of the layers is digitalis to only gate some of the loudest peaks. This has a lot of bass in it, but I like that. Let's put ODT on that. Okay, great. Next up, I will put Supermodel on it. Great, so the next layer will be a transient layer. So I started off with kilohertz transient shaper. Actually not that much of a good idea because it triggers a transient too rarely. So let's instead use spiff because I know it is a little bit more friendly in that regard. Nice, I like the pre-ringing artifacts. And those will lean in with the digitalis stuff pretty well, I think. Cool, now let's use Saturn to drive things a little bit.
Next up, we need the bass line back into this. So let's load Fastploid on a very low tone. Maybe we need to further reduce some of the high-end energy. to have another layer in there that has something to do with the mid-range because it is a little bit hollow at the moment. So let's also use Supermodel there. Now let's add an instance of Saturn at the end to round things a little bit up. less resonances in the high end. to the bridge now. Yeah. That's pretty cool too. I mean, I'm personally sold. I should definitely keep on making creative mastering chains. It might seem pretty unprofessional, but just listen, you know. But you can make your own decision. What do you like about this and what do you hate about this? Do you think this is an option even for professional pop productions in the future? I mean, obviously they are not doing that right now, but I could imagine a future in which they are doing that to, you know, flavor up some of the dull sounds that we hear every day in the radio. It all sounds the same, but a creative mastering chain could shake things up and I kinda want that. 
I kind of want that to happen. It sometimes has its limitations because you have not designed the sounds to work with the chain. Obviously, there are sometimes these moments that are a little bit edgy, but that also makes the character of the music more interesting, in my opinion. Yeah, but what's your opinion? <laughs> 